Hi friends, today I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, the law of giving and receiving and the higher heart and how all of this kind of works together from a yogic perspective. I'm uh, doing this little uh, series that I'm starting today because our beginner yoga series starts and we're going to start talking a lot more about yogic philosophy and whatnot and I want to kind of let you know where I'm coming from. You know, my lineage is through Maharishi Yogi, which is through uh, Transcendental Meditation. I studied with uh, Deepak Chopra with the Chopra Center for Wellbeing and that's where I became really familiar with um, the Law of Giving and Receiving, and that is from Dr. Chopra's book, The Seven Spiritual Laws of Success, and if you want to um, download it, I'll leave the links in my blog and stuff, and you can do that, so that'll help you kind of follow along. Um, so let's talk a little bit about this law of giving and receiving. It relates with the heart, um, and in your heart, we say that you have this chakra or this energy center, and it's called Anahata and the color is green and a lot of you are familiar with that because you do come to yoga already and we talk about that but what you may not understand is why the heart is so significant in yoga and why our practices are designed to create you as a more heart-centered being and it's actually a very um, interesting story from a yogic standpoint so from the yogic standpoint there is uh, this idea, okay, there's this philosophy that says that you were created and you were created to live meaningful purpose, you have a purpose for being here, uh, the expression of who you are is unique to you and it's unique to you and translated through you through uh, what's called the Hridaya, which is the higher heart. So we'll get to that though. Um, so once upon a time, there was something, uh, all that is divine consciousness, unity consciousness, Christ consciousness, God if you will, but there was something unmanifest and it has some creative power and at some point this unmanifest creative power, God if you will, um, out of maybe nothing more than sheer boredom, <laughs> had the thought that it would be fun to create you. So let's say it decided it wanted to create an amber. It was like, okay, I'm going to create an amber. And so this energy of creation took off with this thought of amber, and then amber incarnated through the womb of a mother and father in conscious communication, hopefully, and amber was born. Um, Amber is perfect, and all babies are perfect, right? And gosh, you see a baby smile, and you can even see uh, the divine, you know, in the baby's eyes, right? And then as Amber grew, uh, she started to uh, self-identify more and more and more, um, and the separation from all that is became stronger and stronger and stronger. Backing up a little bit, when that first thought was... Uh, had in that first incarnation happen, so the mother and the father joined together, and the first cell that is created in a human form, in an embryo, is the heart cell. And it's interesting to know that your heart actually starts beating before you have a brain. And in yoga, that first heart cell contains all of the genetic programming, all the DNA, all of your karma, all of your scarring, all the karma from seven generations back in your own family. And that first initial cell is really what we call the hridaya. So it's the higher heart. So you have this heart chakra, anahata, and then off to the side, you have this other something going on, this other energy center. And when you're born, this perfected being, all of this is merged together. But as you grow and you start to make mistakes or self-identify, have your own likes, your own dislikes, um, maybe you're rewarded, maybe you're criticized, maybe life is easy, maybe life is hard, but this for diet, it moves over and over and over and over and it becomes off-centered. And our energy becomes out of balance and we suffer. So in yoga, the process is to align the energy body through the movement of the body, through the movement of the breath, through standing in these beautiful postures, which are actually energy seals, through right living, through right action, through right communication. All of this brings this 
all back into alignment, and then you know yoga, you know union. Um, so that's what we're doing in yoga. Now, the law of giving and receiving helps this process because it is basically an actionable plan for you to do off of your mat to create a steady stream of flowing of giving and receiving, strength receiving, through the heart. And the practice is simple. It's to simply give a gift to everybody you meet. And you might think, wow, that sounds a little expensive. Um, but a gift can be a smile. A gift can be your attention. A gift can be encouragement, acknowledgement, a hug. A gift can be an actual gift. A lot of gift giving is already done on a daily basis, and that looks like you're providing your, for your family, um, you're cooking for your family, uh, you are consciously communicating with your family and with your employer and uh, with the people, the friends, the loved ones in your life. And so all of that's good, but we want to enter into it in this realm of um, like really strategic giving, you know. So on Mondays, which is the law of giving, receiving in the seven spiritual laws of success, on Mondays you're always reminded that it is the day to actively give. Now, I think giving is easy, you know, and I think most people would agree. I mean, don't we all love to give presents? But it's really, really hard to get. So you also have to practice getting, receiving. And that means when somebody gives you a compliment, you have to say, thank you. And you have to actually take it into your heart. If somebody's giving you a hug, you know, in America, like a lot of huggers are like, ah, oh, people are touching me, right? Um, no, it's not that. It's like really like fall into the uh, hug and uh, feel the benefit of the energetic exchange and really accepting that into their life. Um, another great practice too is to um, start a, a gratitude. So, you know, you'd wake up in the morning and be like, I'm so thankful for this and this and that and go to bed at night and be thankful. A lot of people will do a gratitude journal where they write down like three things that day that they're grateful for. Um, and it's important to remember to be grateful for the things that don't seem so great in your life. Um, so those are our challenges, um, things we're up against. You know, everything is approached as a beautiful healing lesson, a chance to expand our consciousness. Um, so that's another beautiful practice of uh, the law of giving and receiving. Um, you know, coupled into all of this is the understanding, and this is especially true through, like, my lineage, is that, you know, meditation is the goal. So the physical movement we do through yoga, the pranayama, the breath work we do, um, the food, the Ayurveda, the physical practice of, uh, of yoga, all of that is just an assumption. It's just assumed that's what you're doing so that you can ultimately sit in your seat of meditation. And that's where you're really going to realize your full potential and you're going to have this tangible experience with the divine, with all that is, with God, if you will, so that um, you understand what those thoughts were that created you. Like, wouldn't that be great if you really understood why you're here and what you're supposed to do now that you're here and if you could really honor all these beautiful gifts we were born with. Um, so that's my little lesson on the love giving and receiving. I hope you will join us for our beginner series. It's this month and then again next month. It's $47, which entitles you to three classes a week uh, for 28 days. So three classes a week, four weeks, do the math, ah, 12 classes total. Uh, the reason I set it up that way is because I want you to come to the beginner classes and they're vast, there's a ton to choose from, but I also want you to feel empowered to try some other classes out that you may have been a little intimidated to try. Um, if you're a member, of course, you're welcome at anything. And of course, you can drop in for $16 or $20 for Kundalini to our classes so you don't have to buy this pass. But the pass is like a great value and it's going to, you know, you're going to feel like you're joining a club or something like that. So uh, that's why I'm doing that. And uh, I guess that's enough. So I'm at nine minutes. That's a really long video for you guys to watch. I do appreciate your attention and I will see you on your mat. Bye, darlings.